what the hell does the word nice mean? No one really knows what it means. <laughs> but we all use it all the time. In fact, I think it's the amount that it's used that's made it become useless. Its definition settles somewhere between pleasant and agreeable, which is totally boring and vague, the way that most of us use it. It's like the frickin' khaki pants of adjectives. <laughs> How was it? It was nice. It's basically the word you use when you're too lazy to think of anything else to say. I miss the good old days when nice really meant something. Yeah, it wasn't always this way. Nice used to mean something really bad and honest and so not Minnesotan. And if you understand the former glory that used to be the word nice, you'll understand why its current version pales in comparison. So back in ancient Rome, <laughs> Latin came from nescius, which meant ignorant, from the verb nescire, which meant literally to not know. And then to the 12th century, in old French, it became nice, which meant Wait for it, wait for it. Weak. And then, it, yeah. And then, uh, then it got to English throughout the Middle Ages. Um, it picked up all sorts of fun connotation and a lot of substantive uses, such as um, finicky, sloth, um, ostentatious, my favorite wantonness, which is like a classy way to say slut. And so how do you get to where it became close to our usage in the 1700s? Um, I can only think of one thing, my close friend. Uh, <laughs> somebody said it and it was taken wrong and bam, now it's agreeable. So <laughs> scholars call this journey of a word from good to bad amelioration, but um, us drunks know it by its street name, beer goggles. A lot of us are probably getting ameliorated right now. <laughs> Am I right? And I mean, I like, uh, I'm not totally against like favorable words. I like compliments as much as the next girl with daddy issues. But I'm saying like, how can a word be favorable when it's so often used like in the opposite way? And it's never just good and bad. It's not black and white. It's become a crutch of the passive aggressive. So let's talk about some of these passive aggressive uses and I'll translate them for you. Like nice haircut. This is not a compliment. <laughs> this is somebody basically saying, hey, I noticed you changed your appearance. I'm ambivalent about it and I'm also unwilling to pay you an actual compliment. <laughs> or you ask somebody, hey, how was your weekend? It was nice. They're telling you to mind your own fucking business. They don't want to talk about it. Has this ever happened to you? You're telling your friend about somebody that was treating you poorly and they said, I don't know, she was always nice to me. <laughs> this has nothing to do with the person in question, everything to do with your friend saying, I don't blame her, you're stuck up. <laughs> or have we ever been set up with somebody who's really nice? Because what are they gonna say? He's a total dork. They're not gonna wanna sleep with him. They wouldn't say that, so they say, he's really nice. <laughs> to my personal favorite, which I like to call the nice butt. As in, Johnny's really nice, but he's kinda racist. But he's like a really nice guy. <laughs> so nice. It's like any time we try to say something honest, our, in a, our inner Minnesotan takes a hold of the wheel and absolutely refuses to zip or merge or do anything offensive. <laughs> because to be honest, it's taboo to be honest in Minnesota. Which is strange, because we're smarter than that. We're actually, the Twin Cities is actually among the top five most educated cities in the nation. So you'd think that we'd be able to kind of suck it up and take it from each other, you know, some real intense, precise language. Um, not always the case. I'm not telling you that you have to stop being lazy. I'm not even saying that you have to be creative. Someone already made, did all the thinking for us and put it in a book. It's called the thesaurus, not a dinosaur. There's lots of synonyms out there. So if you have something nice to say, don't say it at all. I think we should challenge each other to think of things to say that aren't diluted and vague. 
When we really take time to consider life's subtleties and describe them in ways that respect all of those subtleties, well, then we don't end up with something as boring as what I put up when I was running out of time doing my slides on Sunday. 